Thank you for clicking on the video. This is Cartoonist Dave, and today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be doing a book review of one of my favorite uh, books I've read at least a little while ago. It's called The Will of Time, and we're going to start with the first book called The Eye of the World, and this is going to be uh, a new section of my um, in my channel. I'm going to start reviewing books, comic books, as well as actual books. <laughs> I just know. I just think I, I like to read, and I, I think I should probably share that, at least give out some uh, editorial, some of my insights, some of my viewpoints about what I actually like and what I dislike about uh, fiction and storytelling. All right? All right, so let's get into it. So, okay, so The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan, um, the first book in the Will of Time series, I actually read this book about maybe 12 or I would say almost 10 or 12 years ago. Um, I thought it was good then, um, but I'm going to, I actually read it again and I have a new found perspective on it. Um, and I just want to go into detail. So this story is very good versus evil. If you like Star Wars or if you like Lord of the Rings, especially Lord of the Rings, you'll love this. You'll love this story. Um, it's it's very traditional, I'll say that. But it does things a little differently. It does subvert some expectations. But you remember, this is actually written back in 1990, so it's still very traditional. There is a chosen hero. There is a dark lord. There is strange creatures or strange entities looking for him. There is a wizard or a wizard woman who's going to try to protect him. There's a there's a there's a knight that she has. His name is Lan. He's actually her warder. Um, there's side characters, Egwene, Matt, Perrin, Nineveh. Um, very interesting. Now, here's the thing. That sounds very like, this is just a ripoff of Lord of the Rings. <laughs> or no, like, not really. It's very similar to the Lord of the Rings, especially Fellowship. Um, but what makes the, what makes this, uh, story so interesting to me, especially the series as a whole, because after the first book, it actually takes off. Like it goes in completely different directions than you ever thought. Um, but at the heart of the story is this. So men and women, they are uniquely different and men possess a certain type of magic called Sidene. And women possess a certain type of magic called Sidar. Um, something happened in the, in the ancient past where Sidene has been tainted by the Dark Lord. Um, so man, men, they, they've been cut off from their magic using. And women have been able to use this magic because they still have they, – they, their, their magic is still pure. So what that means is over time it's created a culture of um, – it's a matriarchy, basically. Women are in higher stations of power than the men. The way the way women talk about men in this book is a little off putting sometimes. But you do have to remember that men are considered at least men who 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 have the um, capability of channeling. That's what they call magic users. They have the capability of channeling. Men who have that capability are seen as dangerous. And cannot be trusted because they, when they do tap into this magical power, since it is corrupted, they go insane and they kill people around them. So yeah, it's hardcore, but, uh, yeah, sometimes women in this book, they're very, uh, misandrist. They're very anti-man sometimes, but even though they, they, they are complex, they're not just completely mean or evil. They just have shades of gray. Uh, but the main character is a man, uh, Randall Thor. And what makes him different is because there's an ancient prophecy called um, the dragon. Each cycles of this world of this uh, type of fantasy, uh, there is a chosen one called the dragon. He is supposed to fight and destroy the Dark Lord or at least fight him. Um, but the problem is that the chosen one must ha have side Sidin. But since Sidin has been corrupted, the chosen one will be corrupted because that's that's been the plan of the dark lord and the, and the it, it's very intricate but it's it, it rand out thor i'm not going to say what rand perrin and um matt they are for some reason being chased by these creatures trollocs and one of the most interesting characters in the book her name was moraine she kind of look she's kind of like gandalf but instead of like a old very old dude she's basically like a very Young looking, but very mature woman. 
She's very smart, very wise, and actually one of the most interesting characters in the book. Every time we got to a section of her, I thought she was very interesting because she's not just an ass. She's not an asshole. She's very, like, the way she says things, you can tell she thinks about everything meticulously. meticulously. <laughs> and she's very, it's interesting. But also, another great character. Okay, we're in the character sections that I like. We're going to go in the character sections. Another great character I like is Lan, her warder, which means he's going to, he's going to do everything he can to protect her uh, since he's he's very, like, uh, strong. There's some mysteries that are about him that that are revealed in this book that is that is epic. Um, another great character I like that people in this in the fandom there's a huge fandom about Will of Time by the way. Another great character I like is Nynaeve. She's one of the meanest people in this book, but I like I like her energy. <laughs> I like her energy. Rand, Matt, and Perrin, they are a great group of friends. When I grew up, when I was like younger, like I think about like, younger in high school or uh, actually in middle school. I had like I had like two friends that I talked to all the time. They remind me of uh of the relationship of Rand, Matt, and Perrin. The way they talk with each other, you you can just feel like they they've known each other for so long. And that's the one thing about this book that I have to go into is that the writing style that Robert Jordan has it's it's very weighty, it's very descriptive heavy, and sometimes it can feel like a chore to get through some chapters. I'm gonna be honest, but. Uh, every sentence is purposeful. Every paragraph is meaning there's lore, there's lore dumps. And I, I going through it a second time, I found it much more enjoyable than the first. The first time I was like, man, this dude just writes about embroideries. He writes about descriptions of town and, and the, um, the fences, the rooftops, the mead that's even in the end, the, the skirts, the, the, the blouses, the trousers, the shoes. <laughs> But he's able to paint such a rich, beautiful world, a tapestry, as well as providing a good narrative for the, for, for us to follow. So now that I read it a second time, I'm, I'm much more appreciative of Robert Jordan's writing style. Um, now let's talk about the, um, at least not the plot, but more about the, um, how the way the book is uh, structured. One criticism I have about this, about this uh, book, it's structured in a very, uh, traditional sense but something happens near the end where it kind of speeds up and, and things just happen and I, I i know what 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 they are now but when i read it for the first time i was confused even now i just know that from a writing perspective there should have been more like payoff uh there should have been more like at least ex explanations of what's happening but he was hit dude it's almost a thousand page book so i understand but I don't know. The second book in the series is much better. I still remember that second book is so good. Uh, but this book, uh, for a tradition, if you're looking for a traditional good versus evil fantasy book, definitely read The Eye of the World because once you do, now you have like 13 to 15 or 14 books to read through that are going to be really good. I got to book five. I'm rereading this series because I want to read all 15 and there's one prequel. That's why I said 15. Um, but yeah, overall, I'm going to give this book a 8.1 out of 10. Uh, I really enjoyed it. It took me about three weeks to read because I haven't been reading that much. I'm getting back into reading. Right now, I'm reading The um, the Magician, The Rift War Saga by Raymond E. Feist and Robert Jordan's books. I'm going to be doing a lot more book reviews on this channel as well as comic books. So I'm going to get you Dragon Ball, uh, Akira Toriyama stuff his short works and also other comics that I like as well as fiction books like this. So thank you so much for watching the video. <laughs> if you haven't read this book, maybe this is a great recommendation for you, but thank you so much. Like, and subscribe and have a great day.